This is my ultimate 16,000 ringgit Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 Sonos setup and here's what others have to say about it. Okay, that was unexpected. I am a Sonos user. I did not know that I could have this experience at home. I'd rather come here to watch the movie than to go to GSC or TGV. It, it literally feels like cinema at home. My hair was like... <laughs> So, Google is everyone's best friend, right? So, I want to be your best friend too. So, I wanted to answer all of your frequently asked questions on Sonos' latest smart speaker, the Sonos ERA 300. So, here we go. How tall is the Sonos ERA 300? Well, the official dimensions of the Sonos ERA 300 is 6.30 by 10.24 by 7.28 inches. And here's a size comparison with the Sonos ERA 100, the Sonos Move and the biggest Sonos 5. Does the Sonos ERA 300 have to be plugged in? Yes, it needs to be plugged in since it's not a portable speaker, but it would be great if you could, right? <laughs> Maybe Sonos ERA 310. Can I connect the Sonos ERA 300 via Bluetooth? Yes, you can as the Sonos ERA 300 joins the Sonos ERA 100 and the other portable lineup to include Bluetooth connectivity. Does the Sonos ERA 300 have an Ethernet port? Technically, no, but you can add the 3.5mm line in or Ethernet connection using the separate dongle that connects to the ERA 300 via the USB-C port at the back. But I don't really think that you need to though because it comes with a very reliable Wi-Fi 6 connection. How many channels are in the Sonos ERA 300? So in total, there are 4 channels which uses 6 amplifiers, 2 woofers and 4 directional tweeters to project the sound to the front left, right and above in order to create a real surround experience. Can the Sonos ERA 300 get loud? Oh yes, it gets super loud. Can you only connect the Sonos ERA 300 as a TV speaker? Well, technically you can, but even if you successfully do that, the ERA 300 can do it via the line-in port, but you will probably experience a slight delay and you'll only be limited to stereo audio. Now, this is because the ERA 300 is not designed to be used as your primary TV speaker. So the correct way to use the Sonos ERA 300 for your TV is to be the rear surround in your Sonos home theater setup. What is spatial audio on the Sonos ERA 300? Now, spatial audio in simplest terms is making the sound come out from every direction for better immersion. So, sounds comes from the front, sides and even the top. Which finally brings us to showing you how I achieve the Dolby 7.1.4 setup. So, let's head back to my home. So, in order to achieve this Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 setup, there are a total of four speakers. One, two, three and four. But I'm sure you might be wondering, why only four speakers? Well, let me explain. Now, firstly, keep in mind that this entire setup was built in a span of several years of purchasing Sonos speakers. And the brain of this setup is this, the Sonos Arc Soundbar, which you can check out that video at the card above and also at the description below. And this will handle the center, left and right speaker channels. Then down below, there's the Sonos Sub Gen 3, which will be the 0.1 in this 7.1.4 setup. Now, there's also the 7.2.4 setup that you can do with two Sonos Sub Gen 3, but I'm not trying to make myself or even my neighbor's death, so just one sub is more than enough for me. And by adding the Sonos Sub Gen 3 to the Sonos Arc, the Sonos Arc will cleverly sense, ah, the Sonos Sub is helping me to produce a bass. So it will concentrate the projection on the highs, mids and the upward firing speaker and let the Sub do all the bass work. Then when we walk towards the back, here are the two new stars of the setup which is the Sonos ERA 300 speakers. Now, it is on a pair of Sonos 300 stand. And the reason why I put them on a stand instead of mounting them on the wall, firstly, because I wanted the accuracy in height because I didn't want to measure each side to make sure that it is correct and all. And secondly, in case I shift houses or if I want to change my setup in the future, I can just easily remove the stands. Just like how I replaced the Sonos One SL to this Sonos ERA 300. So is there a huge difference changing between the Sonos One SL to this? <laughs> yes, of course. Now, besides the obvious size difference, the main difference is that there is a physical upward firing speaker on the Sonos ERA 300 compared to the non-existent upward firing speaker on the Sonos One SL. So yes, this overall setup is heavily relied on the Sonos Arc. And similar to how when I added the Sonos Sub with the Arc, when I added the Sonos ERA 300 to the whole setup, the Sonos Arc once again offloaded some of the upward firing speaker load to the ERA 300, hence giving you 
a way balanced sound for the front and also the rear area for better sound immersion. So all of this setup is done without having speaker wiring going from one end to the other since all of this connects wirelessly. Now it not only is great from a sound perspective but also from a clean aesthetics point too. Plus with this overall aesthetics of the speaker that gets a huge check mark on my end. Just like how you get a check mark from me for liking and subscribing to this channel. Then don't forget to join us at our community discord channel and also tell me whether or not you tried a similar setup yourself and if you like a written version of this video do drop by at our website at www.adamlobo.tv and thank you very much in advance. Now to set up the Sonos ERA 300 is extremely easy as usual. Just download the Sonos S2 app and add the speakers accordingly. Now I've done a video of going through the app very extensively too which I'll link that video in the description below. And one crucial thing that you need to do is True Play which I highly recommend not to skip because it works to give you the best sound experience. Now as much as I've already done it, I'm going to do it right now just for the sake of showing you what you need to do. So how does this sound? Well, how about hearing it from few of our subscribers and friends who are experiencing it for the very first time? <sighs> okay, that was unexpected. I expected it to be good. I didn't expect it to be that good. I am a Sonos user. I did not know that I could have this experience at home. This is a first experience for me to have at Dolby Atmos at home. And this was really mind-blowing. The bass, the clarity of sound on this is just so much better. I think that was such an like a mind-blowing experience. It made me feel like I was in a cinema. To get this quality of sound, I feel like I'd rather come here to watch the movie than to go to GSC or TGV. It, it literally feels like cinema at home. Honestly speaking, if it's someone like me, I really appreciate audio. And if money is not a thing, right? You, you, you just give it to me, I'll, I'm like, yes. I currently have a Sonos setup at home and it's the first gen Sonos. So I've had it for a long time, which let me tell you is the problem because these things don't break and they're really good. Watching all the clips, uh, 4K clips from the movies, from Top Gun. I mean, Top Gun really gave me goosebumps. I don't know, how do I say like mind blown thing where my goosebumps, my hair was like, <laughs> I've never heard that kind of sound before in a home setting because uh, the, at most also I had like a play bar and that's about it. Like watching uh, James Bond just now to, uh, to hear the little cracks in uh, the glass, uh, you know, being shot at. As an audio engineer, audio is very important and we buy expensive speakers, expensive headphones to get that sound and to get the quality of sound and clarity. So trying to make a case to buy a new one is actually very difficult because I've had the old one for 10 years now and it's perfectly good until Adam played me the Top Gun Maverick on this 7.1 thing, which sounds amazing. It was just a trailer. I mean, Top Gun really gave me goosebumps. You can see in the reaction earlier, that, that was crazy. I mean, the plane was really flying all over me. You know, I did not know that I could have this experience at home. So uh, yeah, it was a very good thing <laughs> to, to get this chance to experience it. If money was no object, I would probably buy two of these, one for my office and one for my house because my clients would love to listen to an Atmos mix. I mean, just the Dolby Atmos compatibility, all of that stuff. I mean, people use those words all the time, the technical terms, but actually it's something you can experience, you can understand. When you sit down and you listen to it, you notice the difference, and I know mine doesn't sound like this. So definitely after seeing the ARC pairing with the sub and two pairs of the ERAS 300, I'm definitely going to upgrade mine very soon. Now, I know not everyone can afford this setup immediately, but as mentioned earlier, this was an accumulation throughout the years starting from the Sonos Arc, the Sonos Sub and the Sonos One SL and then eventually switching to this Sonos ERA 300. So, let's answer some of the several more Google-related FAQs. 
How much is the Sonos ERA 300? Now I'll give you a direct answer. It is 2,799 ringgit in Malaysia for one. How do I know if Dolby Atmos is working with my current setup? Now firstly, it will be displayed within the Sonos app on the now playing screen. And the more obvious way is also seeing it before playing the movie content, whether or not it's on Netflix or any other platforms. Where to position the ERA 300 as rear speakers? Now if you position at a listening height like this, with the stands or even through the wall mounting for the ERA 300, you can place it face towards the front like this since the speakers will be auto-tuned to project towards all of the areas better compared to the Sonos One SL where it needs to be towards where you're sitting at. Can the Sonos ERA 300 be used as a stereo pair for music listening? Yes, you can. Is the Sonos ERA 300 worth it? Well, whether or not you're using the speaker as a standalone unit, a stereo pair or even rear speakers, the short answer to that is absolutely.